our Saturday morning work session in preparation for the regular council meeting that will happen on Monday. Uh, in attendance, we have myself, Council President Wolf, Council Persons uh, Benedetti, Shrimp, Brueger, and McNamara. We also have Mayor Hughes, uh, Village Council Jesse Champ, and uh, Village Planner Eric Fisher in attendance. <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, first point, uh, I guess I need to let you all know I am not going to be there on Monday. I have a family thing that I will need to attend to. So you all, yeah, you raise your hand. Yes, Mary you don't finish. No, you're okay. always finished. Okay. No, 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 I'm good. I'm in the same boat. Um, I Right now, we did a learning experience at the office, making sure who could record and how we could record and all of that. So I think we have that pretty much ready to go now. Um, the, um, sorry, the, um, I have a choir concert at 7.30. It's my senior's final, final choir concert and all that, and it's at 7.30. So um, um, Normally, I would figure it out, and this one's her last one ever, so I'm going. Yeah. Um, I'd be mad at you if you didn't. There you go. So we we think we have it figured out. Um, so nobody log in to Village Conference because what we have learned, it is the first person that logs into Village Conference is the only person that can live stream, and Chief has access to the Village Facebook page because he's an admin. Um, on all of the village pages. So he can live stream to the village Facebook page. So until we get more people on there or whatever we decide we wanna do, he is the person that can do it, but only if he logs into village conference. Okay, so fingers crossed that'll work out for everybody on Monday. Yes. Uh, now let's uh, roll just, through, what sorry, was that Mark? Real quick, just to get it out of the way, I recommend with Tiffany and Brian gone that Diane run the meeting then as the most recent past president of council. Yeah, that would be good if you could. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, with that, let's move along here. Uh, so as, as usual, um, you know, I'd like to work our way through the, the meeting packet as much as we can just to make sure that we are all aware of what we're aware of. Uh, we shouldn't have any real surprises. So uh, moving along, I know that we got the much of what would be the police report late last night along with the meeting packet. Uh, everybody should take their opportunity to re review that. Um, and I guess Mayor Hughes, if you're not gonna be there, we're not gonna expect to get much of a an engineer's update or... Um, uh -huh. My goal is, um, my goal, is I will either A, get that to Diane before mine, mm -hmm. um, kind of like I read his. Um, I do expect him to send me one. I mean, he does it every Monday. Assuming yeah. that he does, I will actually go ahead and forward that to her. Um, there's also a chance that I may, it, uh, we're going to assume I'm not going to be there. So I will get both reports to Diane. Um, if I have anything that way, she can just read them like normal. Um, and then... There was something else I was going to tell you about that. I don't want to keep going. I'll think of it. Right. To that end, are we expecting any nothing, uh, anything groundbreaking or shattering? So that uh, you know, again, my my primary purpose for reviewing these at this meeting is to make sure that we're prepared. Right. I I would hate to find out that uh, we we know that the sky is falling directly above Minerva Park at a business meeting. Right. That's a that's a work session kind of conversation. Yeah. Mine is going to be um, trying to figure out what for her to say because I, there's nothing going on. Really right. and, if, and if that's the case, that can be the case, right? There's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Presuming similarly from fiscal officer. Uh, council, do you have any anything major to report with what's, what's going on? No. Jesse? <laughs> Sorry, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think you guys, you guys are still working with Columbus on figuring out what sewers are what. Is there? Yes, is and there it, it's almost more so in Mike's camp at the moment. They're still not okay. contentious, but yes, I'm keeping it apprised of the situation. Got it. Okay. 
Very good. Um, I asked real quick about uh, about what's going on with Franklin County and the permitting process. I had... that that's right. So that had been pushed to the back uh, back of the table. I, Eric and I have been trying to get a call with Eric. Can, can you remind me of her name? Uh, Jen is her name, and she's Jan. she's been responsive but busy. But the she's been trying to work on the prosecutor. They have a new one now, Jesse. That's what she told me. Right. And now that you know, now that we mentioned that, and I'm glad you brought that up, Tony. I should have remembered that. I I have an inroad now to the new prosecutor's office through another attorney in my office, and I think I can expedite this very quickly now that I've been reminded of it. So let I'm me do that. I, I can talk with him this weekend. What the prosecutor to have to do with all of this? So, so process has to do Tony because since we have a contract with them, all right, and since they are the administrator of the building code, it's their interpretation that matters, right? And so we had we had some preliminary meeting and discussion, and everybody seems to be on board. And I think they just have to have their legal counsel get with our legal counsel, and everybody just has to sign off on it from a who knows contractual standpoint. There's an addendum. I don't know. There are some little process items and then we're done. So the prosecutor is their legal attorney? Legal? Oh, yeah. For the county, yep. one, one of them. Someone's assigned. Correct. Oh. Moving forward. Moving forward. All right. Uh, which would bring us to you, actually, Tony, uh, regarding planning and zoning report. Anything you'd want to give us a heads up on there? Well, I'll just tell you all, uh, we had a meeting over at the Lily Pond this uh, on Wednesday, so that project is moving forward. That's really all I, all I have from uh, planning and zoning. That, we're going to start working on a uh, pods ordinance for storage pods, I believe, is the I only we... report from planning and zoning. I thought we have one. Or is it well, just that's, the, that's the common. I think we started talking about it. I don't know that anything was <clears throat> finalized because I, I have to do a little research, uh, Councilman Wolf, and just make sure that nothing's on there. Because Tony's absolutely right. We had a, I, I recall a large discussion, but when I did a cursory search, and maybe our, our ordinance is just not there uh, online, um, I had a little digging just make sure what was and what wasn't approved. And if nothing was approved, as I told PNZ, We'd, we would bring it back to them and just send it up the chain, you know, right. get back on I the mean, path. So I recall at least one household who had a flooded basement and had a storage pod in their driveway for an extended period of time. And they, they were required to get a permit of some sort. Now, you know, whether the administration at that time made stuff up, I, I don't know, but that's a, you know, that's a nice way. Yeah, it wasn't, if I may, it wasn't made up. So if I, if I recall this correctly, so the administration, the mayor always has the authority to kind of step in and they wanted to get some paperwork on it, I believe, if I recall this correctly, um, and, and just make sure everyone was clearly aware of, you know, how long that needed to be in the front driveway. Because technically speaking, you can interpret a pod in multiple ways. It, it, you mm -hmm. just don't get to plop down a cargo container <laughs> you know, on your driveway, whether it's in the, you know, if it's not on the books, it's just not a permitted use within the residential district, right? So at the end of the day, we, the mayor is allowed to require special permits for things. And, and we just mm -hmm. want to make sure everyone's aware there was a time frame, and we, we worked with them and that was the end of the story. Gotcha. So what you're suggesting is the incident in memory was not a storage container permit, but a special use permit. And that's so what we're looking to do is uh, create a a, uh, uh, a codification of that particular use yes. and its allowed nature. Correct. Correct. Got it. Well, then why didn't we just say that to begin with? <laughs> <laughs> just, just feeling saucy. Okay. Which uh, brings us back to you, Eric. Anyhow, uh, any updates from a village planning perspective? Um, just a, any number of things going on. I'm happy with the new code enforcement officer. He's a uh, working out well and very uh, knowledgeable and energetic. And we like that uh, hit the ground running type thing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just trying to think ahead real quick because it's early still not enough coffee. Um, I suspect we're just going to keep chugging along. I think you see the Westerville schools are moving on, got buildings up, stuff like that. So we're working through a lot of those admin items and uh, nothing crazy, fortunately, to report. Unless I've, marriage is something. 
Yeah, I have two things, um, two simple things. And it was only, again, Eric, sorry, I wasn't there yesterday. Could we get an update on if we need to get a sign or if we can get Westerville to get a sign to where people are not driving up Minerva Lake Road and they're only using Farview again? I believe going in, there's a sign, but not going out. And somebody um, sent me some pictures of extremely large automobiles driving up Minerva Lake Road. And they believe that Minerva Lake Road has been destroyed right. by the, so you get the point. Yeah, um, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll remind the, I'll remind, I mean, that's been very, made very clear to the contractors and yeah. subs. And I've, I've been in those meetings with a larger group and yeah. uh, I will say, hey, maybe we can use some signs. Yeah. So, and it, it's just been recommended by a couple of residents on Facebook a while back. And then somebody reminded me of it again. So I just wanted to see if we could, if we need to get signs, just let me know. But if we could get them, I'm sure they have some. So sure. um, that was number one. And then I, this is not, this is just with Eric. Um, if nobody knows, Eric's been working with the rehab facility um, that backs Jordan Road. And he, I don't want to say he has finally gotten them to, but I'm just going to say he has finally gotten them to put a fence all the way across the back. Um, so the residents over here are thrilled. Um, I will say they did start the fence backwards, which honestly, I didn't even notice. And that is, you know, I, everybody knows that I do not pay attention to stuff like that. Like I would have never. So um, that did get well, handled, Mayor, just so you know, perfect. they're going to make their contractor reverse it. I figured so. But anyways, that was the least of my concerns. I'm just happy. My husband even said the same thing. I'm just happy to see a fence. So um, so just as an FYI, they are putting up a fence as well. So all the way across the back, they've already started it. They did get a permit um, and could not be any more happy that he stayed on them for probably close to what, a year before we finally got him to really. There was a lot of discussion. Yes. Well, well, they kept changing ownerships that are not whatever. So it's been difficult, but we are getting it. Nice. And thank you uh, for good work, Eric. Uh, anything else from planning? Uh, no, not at this time. I'll, right. I may have a few updates at the meeting. As I know <clears throat> down. Sure. Uh, and then MPCA, Diane? MPCA, the well, meeting won't be till Wednesday. Okay. Um, it's been pretty quiet. So. Very good. Uh, committees. And again, right, I just to make sure everybody understands why I want to go through these. And this meeting is just, uh, if there's anything earth shattering that we need to prepare for, right? Nobody should be blindsided. Uh, so just a quick run through of committee reports uh, from activity from the month of April. Uh, Councilperson McNamara, anything to report from uh, community? Well, I spoke to the gentleman, well, I texted the gentleman who manage the pool and the vending for the pool who say everything is running well. I was put into an email, I believe we all were about chlorine supplies, which appears to be going well. Um, I'll update those things. Um, I would like to, if, if it's, it'll be very brief, um, for the lake cleanup coming up on the 12th, 13th or 18th, 19th, or whichever those two Saturday Sundays are. Um, I assume it will be like last year where we encourage residents to bring, you know, outdoor, you know, shovels, this, that, and the other, but we'll also have some that can be supplied. Is that the impression that, Madam Mayor, is that the impression you were under that we would be able to repeat? Yeah. Okay. Um, that sounds good. Um, those are the two major things um, that I had going on is that I asked the relevant parties that the pool is doing and it seems to be doing well. And I just wanted to hammer out some of those final details about what we will be providing versus what residents will be encouraged to provide for the uh, lake cleanup. Other than that, we're good. Sounds great. Uh, oh, I also sent, I also sent, I, I do apologize. I also sent an email to the mayor and Tony about recommended native plant lists for the village for future plantings. Has anything happened with those or is that still just kind of? Well, I, I, I want to know if you've gotten with Lisa about this. I tried to find the, you know, she had put together a list of trees for Minerva Park and I can't find it. It's not part of the code. 
Um, you know, we did find the tree list actually, Kelly and myself did, and um, it has been updated for the 21st century to put it um, kindly. It's, it's a great list, don't get me wrong, but there's a few tree species that no longer are recommended by the um, big authorities on that subject. Well, what I would recommend is you and Lisa hashing that out because I think Lisa just did that recently. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think she did. I, I reviewed the list and uh, uh, whoever updated it just said Kelly updated it or whatever. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah, it has all the uh, current recommendations as far as I know from my resources. Yeah, that does need to be updated absolutely, and I'm sure that uh, Lisa would agree. I, I think if David, if um, I'm more available during the day and, and uh, I can show it to Lisa and, and get her feedback if you want me to. That's, that's wonderful. I, okay. I applied for a day shift position on another unit, so I'll keep everyone in the loop. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, that would be very helpful. All right, I, I can do that. So I, won't be, I wouldn't be ready to talk about that tomorrow. Obviously, I'm sorry, on Monday, but certainly on uh, the next, uh, certainly by uh, if Lisa is not on vacation or some, something like that, we should be able to get back to you next week. Excellent, because the biggest thing of my that I want to get this hammered out for is for the school and the community building. So that's all I got, guys. Very good, uh, finance committee. I, I. At this moment, I cannot 100% say that I recall that we met last month, or if we did, it was uh, it was regarding TIF, TIF revenue financing, and we've already discussed all of that. I don't think there's any additional report necessary. Uh, streets, uh, Tiffany, is there anything you want to, yeah. No, let's back up first. Oh, um, yeah, go ahead. Just as a finance thing for you. Um, the yearly budget meeting that has to be publicized and all of that is planned for, we're planned for, um, June 28th, because that is a night that Kim is able to be there. It's already on a Monday night before our meeting. It's, we're going to do it right before our actual council meeting. Yeah. Um, and that's just the public hearing thing. And then the, the goal is, and this is kind of a legislative and finance thing for you guys, but I just want to mention it. The first reading on it is not, it's not ready. Obviously it's not ready yet for the first reading. Um, so the plan is to start readings on it and it will be third reading for June 28th, but it will need to be passed as an emergency because it's due to the county or whoever it goes to um, like the 20 something of July. So because of where a meeting falls, it falls a couple days shy of it. So um, we would like to do that as an emergency um, because we want to take our time making sure that it gets done correctly. But if anybody wants to make a note, June 28th is gonna be the meeting date for that budget meeting, the budget hearing meeting that has to be publicized. If we move a first reading up to Monday, we shouldn't have to pass as an emergency, Somewhere. even if we don't, I don't think it's anywhere. Well, um, not even first reading ready. You mean my first reading ready? <laughs> let I mean, me, you let know. me ask because that would work if we did do it. Um, and then the other thing I was thinking, and just, you know, I was thinking on those same lines, if we do have like a quick reading on that, like second meet, second Monday or whatever, we could definitely kick those three meetings out and have the time. Cause I think it's only like, I think it's July 20th, so we're not that far off. So I think right. picking it one or, and mail time or however we drop it off time or whatever we do with it. Let me see, let me find well, that out, but that would I, be a worst case. So I think we had agreed to not have a mid-month work session because this, we had a work session last month or okay. last Monday. We could potentially in, in June is what I was thinking on that. If oh, that I see hard. what you're saying. Never mind. But then that, that would be a, but that would be a third reading. If right, we did it, and that's not that doesn't feel nice like it's one thing to move things along I, go ahead the reason that never mind i've already figured it back out she is not available june 14th and it can't be passed until we have the meeting uh, so the 
meeting schedule because she's at Johnstown on the first Monday, same Monday as we do. She can be there on our second Monday. Got it. So that is, that's the reason. So as long as I keep talking myself through it, um, yeah. June 28th is the date she can be there for the public meeting. So it's good. And so, I have on my calendar that we have a work session on the 17th. Is that incorrect? I, I'm, it's your my, my recollection, since we're talking about it, we might as well hash it out, that when we agreed to meet last, or yeah, last Monday, it was with the knowledge that we weren't meeting the 17th. I guess the whole point is, does somebody have something that they're dying yeah. to talk about? Is, yeah, that would be the question. If, uh, if there is a something that we need to meet that day, if we keep that Monday open for those kinds of purposes, but we had kind of tentatively agreed that we weren't doing four Mondays in a row. All right, then moving on to uh, streets. Mayor Hughes, you, you've been given the streets update for. Yes. Um, so just nothing. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. We really haven't done too much. Um, Eric, I know uh, one of the things that if we could get an answer for when the, and again, I wasn't there and I, this is normally stuff Eric and I do on, um, if we could get the asphalt schedule by Monday night so we could let people know Monday night when we expect them to do the asphalt in front of the um, lake. Sure. Uh, I, I know Bill is putting that with AJ is putting that on his schedule. Um, I will verify the date. Yes. So if we could just, just so we could announce when they were doing it. Um, but other than that streets, really, we have absolutely nothing going on. Um, I am expecting some updates, obviously, from Mike uh, for Monday night, but I could ramble on here and act like there's something going on, but there's not. No, 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 no need to ramble right now and say, uh, again, this is really a, an awareness moment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Councilperson Benedetti, any, anything to make this body aware of uh, in advance of Monday for safety? Well, not so much in uh, advance. I, I'd like to take a moment here to talk about... Uh, I, well, to get a feeling on wh what the rest of council's ideas are about with police practices, you know, I've got to I've got to tell you that the, you know, the incident that blew up on Facebook with, uh, you know, the kid that got pulled over and his car search has given me uh, some concerns about that whole process, uh, and you know I. You know, I don't even know where to start with this and that I get, you know, to get right to the point is, you know, pulling people over for minor uh, infractions. You know, I understand, uh, you know, that that's a common police practice and I'm not in favor of doing stuff like that. Uh, you know, in, in this particular case, the thing that bothers me the most is not so much the police pulling someone over for uh, a burned out license plate light, where the police, in my opinion, cross the line is when they ask somebody to search their car when they haven't done anything else wrong. And, you know, I got to ask the police if, do they do this to everybody? And if they don't do it to everybody, you know, how do they decide who they are going to ask to search their car and who, who doesn't? Because this is the thing to me that, you know, it may not be racial profiling. I'll get back with you there, Mary. You don't have to hold, because I got a few seconds. Uh, it, it, this just belongs in a streets meeting and Chief has asked you numerous times. Safety. to schedule hey, hey, Okay, Mary, let me finish here. Is because that I don't want to get, can I finish please, go. Mayor? Yes. Mayor, but, can I please? Go ahead. Thank you. I would like to get the feeling, uh, I don't want to move forward with this if council isn't in favor of asking our police to stop doing this. You know, and this is the other side of this. If I could finish, please. You do that. I really wish you'd let me finish, Mayor. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, you know, the, the chief re recently posted his pictures of the guns and drugs that he got off the street. And that evoked a response from the family of the kid that got pulled over. They're not satisfied with what happened. 
we haven't ever put out a public uh, statement about what happened. And in my opinion, it's not much different than the George Floyd incident with a, you know, how do I say, it wasn't a video showing up, but a, a Facebook or social media complaint about the way our police operate. And, you know, when I see the pictures of the guns that the police have gotten, you know, four or five guns they've gotten off the street, you know, my take on that is that it shows how uh, serious the problem is here in our neighborhood and that our police are running into guns. And I don't understand. I like to tell our police, you guys don't have to put yourselves in harm's way to try to get guns off the street on my behalf because I prefer you guys to be more reactive than proactive. You know, so I, I want to get a, a, a feeling from the rest of council if this is something they want to do, or they want to just let our police pull people over, ask them if they can search every single person they pull over, you know, because that to me, it, it may not be ra racial profiling, but it sure looks like it. And that's what the impression is in the public right now. And our, and our you know, position on this has been to not say anything about it and hope it blows over. Well, like I pointed out, the first time the chief posts something about the stuff that he had gotten off the streets, it evoked a very hostile response from the family and other people. You know, so I, I don't want to go down this road of talking about police practices unless the rest of council is in favor of doing something like this. And I don't know how we go about figuring that out. I would go around and say, what do you think? You think our police should be pulling people over you know, going out looking for trouble. I would be open to having that discussion sometime. So, Tony, I, I am also open to that discussion. Um, I don't know that you and I are going to land of a of of a congruent mind, right? <laughs> but uh, but I am I am open to those discussions, right? I I think that we. If we go down that path, I think that we should take a data-driven approach to these things. And that would be the first step that I would like to move towards. But what data would you need? Well, I, well I, we, we're going to need our officers to start collecting data so that we can actually judge their actions based on, on real data. Well, I'd love to get a copy. Of, they, do, they provide every day a log as to what they get called and, you know, I think it's daily call logs. You know, right. Well, we, that I'd like to take a look at. Yeah. So, and, but yeah. So, so what you have now is at least three council people on board with looking at it, uh, and I think those three were the safety committee, right? Isn't that uh, me, you, and and Councilperson McNamara? We are the safety committee. And I definitely think when you talk about data, that there does need to be uh, complete data. You know, how many stops did you make? did you ask to search the thing and yes uh what was the the ethnicity and gender of the person and are they you know we know new york stop and frisk largely targeted minorities male minorities and was awful and in a year they'd stop and frisk a million people and find seventy thousand people doing something wrong which meant 930,000 people were just being harassed. Right. Didn't it yes. also in, end up with massive litigation fees and a federal injunction at the end of it as well? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, Mary Hughes. Okay. So like I had started to say, Chief has offered to have this conversation. Chief, there are actual answers to every single question he has asked. He just needs to schedule a safety meeting. That's it. Now, um, what I need to do is get information, Mayor, and I've been waiting to do that until I get. Tony, it, it's very simple. It's been over a month, and this is the third time you've brought this up into one of our meetings, and it's just very simple. I, I'm, I don't want to speak for him. I think I could answer every single question that he did. Just hang on. You don't have the information that I'm looking for, so I don't know how you can answer the questions. I haven't asked to get to look at the call logs yet. Have you looked at them? That was not the questions that you asked when you were explaining your whole scenario as to who do they pull over, why do they pull over, you know, all of those kinds of things. 
those are answers he will be able to give you very simply how he has what they do differently now since that particular situation has happened there there are answers to the questions that you just asked that i think a lot of counsel might be interested in hearing um i don't think it's my place to go through and say any of that just because i don't want to misspeak for him um but this again it's been asked to have a safety meeting and i think all of your answers and this isn't negative tony i think that it would be very beneficial there is nobody it sounds like against having this conversation where we end up like brian said i don't think everybody's going to end up on the same page but you obviously have concerns so have a meeting and ask them that's all i wanted to say hey, i'm i'm sorry but like i said earlier today i've been working 15 hours a freaking day or i i told <laughs> tony again i i told i don't disagree but i think the, the questions that you just asked, he can answer very quickly, very easily. There are outcomes to some of the questions that you've asked and you will, I think you will be totally happy with the outcome of some of the answers that you just asked. I just don't want to be the Man, one to I do it. I don't want answers from the chief. I want to see the data. That's what well, I, that's and I haven't first. done that. And you're right. I need to ask those questions and correct. I will. Correct. But the questions that you did ask are answers that he can give you. I think I think what the mayor is trying to say, if I may try to restate things, because I think that's useful, is you know questions regarding policy changes post the the Facebook search incident, right? If 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 the chief has instituted a policy change, that would be useful information, right? Because the story that we had received at that time was that that particular officer uh, was systematic was was regularly searching more than was typical. So, you know, I'm just making this up, but I could imagine that the chief has instituted a policy such that that's not the case anymore, right? If that's the answer, that's probably the answer we, we we're looking for I don't in want to that speak specific for him. regard. I don't want to right? speak for him, but I would say you're accurate. Right. So, right. So that's one of your questions that does in fact have an answer, right? So part of what I would love, right, and I'm on the safety committee meeting or safety committee with you, I'd love you know, to, if you could, um, what's the word I want to compile, uh, a list of the data that you know that we already have that you would like to see and the questions that you would like to have answered, right? Put that in an email and schedule a meeting so that we can, as a committee, you know, right, review, re receive that data and receive the answers to those questions. And then we can figure a path forward from there. Correct. Right. Otherwise, we will just talk at each other for hours on end and not get anywhere because, you know, without without knowing what we want, we can't really get anywhere. That's fair. That's, does that sound fair? Absolutely. So if, if you can get that to us, we look forward to it and uh, look forward to doing good work. All right. Uh, yep. Great way. <laughs> hmm? What? What you can always rearrange my words to make it exactly what I'm trying to say. You know, that's, uh, <laughs> I, I kind of feel like that, that's, I don't know. You got my All right. Uh, that brings us right down to the, the meat of it, which is legislation. Uh, Councilperson Brueger, I don't, th I don't know that this, that the packet that we got has all the legislation that we're circling with. So um, hopefully you got it uh, elsewhere. But no, uh, most certainly do not. But. All right. Well, I'm I'm okay. dumping that whole load on you. That's that's no, not my problem. Are we at legislation? Uh, we are at legislation. Okay. Um, hey, Mark. Yeah. I, I, I don't want to step on your toes, but because it's a little bit of a mess right there, um, if you don't mind myself and Eric taking over this little itty bitty part, because there's three pieces of legislation, and I think that. Instead of trying to figure it out, Eric can ex well myself and Eric can explain what those are. Yeah, um, I can find which of the six little things had the legislation. But real quick, before I turn that over to you, yeah. um, because it does occur to me that I don't have a legislative meeting scheduled for May. Um, I think Monday is going to be pushing a little early because one of the things I'm going to want is. David, hopefully, to have a rough draft of his native plants resolution. Um, could we do a legislative meeting Monday the 24th at 6 o'clock? Sure. 
Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> the, 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 before our regular, the, the standing legislative committee meeting. Is yeah. it not on there? Uh, yeah, I don't think that's the right time. It was, because I don't have it written in my tiny calendar, and I really think that's because I never brought it up in schedule. Uh, okay, let me see if it's on. It's at my fault. Well, it's, it's clearly your fault, Mark, but that's neither here nor there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so you guys would prefer you guys would prefer that I have the finalized list run through, you know, like Lisa and Diane and myself and all that to have as a attachment to the native plants resolution then? Would that be what I'm interpreting? Um, yeah. That would be great. But since this would just be the first time in committee and okay. maybe a first reading after, probably not. Probably the first reading would come after that. You have time to get those in order. All right. And we'll, we'll get that rolling then. Mayor Hughes, I I the I have the village calendar synced to my my G, my Google it. calendar and it's not coming through right now. No, it's I'm not, not getting any of the village stuff on there, so I I am not able to confirm nor deny. No, I'm, I'm pretty good about copying the meetings I need down in my tiny calendar. <laughs> Sorry, it didn't get out in time to make the May announced meeting things. Right. I'm not. Our, yeah, I I think it's not on there. So. Yeah. Um, Actually, just so you know, the 24th meeting is not even on there. So that's yeah. crazier. So because those were actually done a year in advance. So somehow that has deleted because Becky actually, I, I think, oh, no, she didn't. Or they're just gone for some reason. Maybe that year has elapsed. Was yeah. it done a year in advance last May and uh, or last April? And it just, done. we got to the yeah. end of the so we will make sure that we get the rest of these because at some point no at some point these were all on here um mm -hmm. through the entire year because that way people could see it i have no idea where they went but let's look for it tomorrow or monday so um we'll make sure that we get all of those back up there and yes we will make sure that we get it posted um because i did sign a bunch of those so i feel like i did see legislation so maybe it's just not and yeah so let's figure it out let's get it on there and i will put it down for 6 p.m if it's not advertised and we'll get it to you guys Monday afternoon. And then for that meeting, of course, we just talked about Dave's uh, native plant thing. Um, Eric, I assumed you got the email I sent with the revisions on the noise ordinance. The little yes, sir, that's correct, I did. Awesome. So we could have that to look at. Yes. And then I will uh, finally get around to actually rewriting the uh, flag ordinance to take out the community uh, comment section on it, which is, I believe, what we agreed on at the last legislative meeting. And then as far as tomorrow's legislation, yes, I would be more than happy, Mayor Hughes, for you and Eric to uh, take over and talk about that. Perfect. So Eric, I'll go first real quick because mine's probably simpler than yours. Um, the first thing I will talk about is there's going to be a supplemental appropriation. I do think that one might be attached on there. Yep, number um, two on there. Is that one on there? Yeah. Okay. So what that is for is praying to goodness gracious that it's our last one, but this is the, um, let me say it right. This is one more of the um, first quarter last year issue with not paying taxes federal tax withholding penalty from the first quarter of 2021. And um, we did bump it up a little bit um, and I can get you guys the exact amount only because I should have wrote that down, but I told her to do it just a little bit more um, just in case there's another one that pops up. And I do think that this is gonna have to be done a little quicker because the bills do at the end of, it's a very short amount of time before we get another penalty. So. If I need her to do this, um, to waive readings, I'll let you guys know because I don't, I'm not sure how fast we need to do it. Um, so I will verify that, but that's what it's for. It is federal withholdings from uh, the first quarter of last year. And yes, we just now got the bill for it. Um, and we're praying that this is the last one we see. 
So that's that. Is that 08 2021 and it's listed as compensation and damages for yes. 2470? I found the stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. it. 2021. Yeah. So, and, um, for some reason, I feel like it's like 1200 or 1500 or something. I can't remember exactly what it was, but there's the, not a the, the increase, it was uh, current amount is 500 increase yeah. is 2400, $2,470. Okay. Yeah. I can't remember exactly what it was. I'll have to bring that, but we did bump it up a little bit more in case we get one from like the state of Ohio or anything like that over the next couple of weeks. So we just kind of wanted to be prepared that we aren't trying to rush things through. So we're hoping that we don't have another one. Obviously, if we do get another one, you guys would know um, because I think it's important for you guys to know those kind of things. But um, that way we wouldn't have to bring it back legislatively, um, making sure we just have a little cushion in there in case we do get another one. Um, so that was it for that, um, the supplemental appropriation. I don't have any more. I don't really expect this document to change, but obviously um, if anything else comes, we usually do try to throw them on there, but we don't really have anything pressing. Um, Eric and I and code enforcement officer and Leah and every at, basically administration has been working on the fee schedule. Um, the fee schedule, there has been some things that we just haven't liked, things that aren't accurate, things that um, needed adjusted. You guys just did the fee schedule not too long ago, but we didn't want to muddy the waters when we did it. I'm just going to be blunt. Um, when we were fixing it for Westerville City Schools, um, but that's how long we've been talking about the fact that we have solicitor permits on there, um, that the amount doesn't really make sense for what we're doing, but maybe council has a different idea about that. Um, obviously, Tony, I know we've always talked about the um, ice cream trucks paying $150 to come in the village doesn't make a lot of sense. There are printing fees on there. I think it was like 10 cents a copy. Um, some of those are actually different from what the policy actually is. So it's trying to get the fee schedule to match what we actually do or the fee schedule, um, what we want it to do. So that's kind of where the pod conversation started again. Um, we did get the chicken um, added onto the list. So we've just been kind of going through and um, I kind of wanted everybody to look at it, see if they have any issues, problems, concerns, because we're, we are going to try to get this fixed. And Eric, do you want to chime in on this one before you go to the next one? But that's what we're doing with the fee schedule. The fee schedule just has some errors on it that we want to get fixed. No, Mayor, I think you summed it up. And I think on the printing thing, there wasn't, the printing thing was fine. It was, Leah had to um, match up the mayor's court on her end. That was all. So it was, it was already accepted and good. Perfect. So yeah, there, it's just, it's just tightening it up. So, um, but we can kind of go over and show you guys exactly what we changed. And I don't know exactly what we changed because I'm not looking at it, um, but that's why the fee schedule is back in front of you guys again. Okay, so the changes were- Go for it. Um, golf cart inspection was added for $25. And that's because it just happened. Like we just had somebody reach out to us in the last couple of weeks and, and other municipalities do have it. Other cities have it. We just didn't have one. What did you say? Golf cart inspection? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's to make them street um, worthy. Uh, okay. Uh, pool rental um, members and employees only. Resident, two hundred and fifty dollars for two hours. One hundred dollars each additional. Non-resident, three hundred dollars for two hours. One hundred dollars each additional. Um, there was. And that just came from the pool um, legislation, as an FYI. And then, of course, as you mentioned, the peddler registration fee of $150 discuss possible changes. That does seem ridiculous. I'm in favor of just letting ice cream trucks drive through our neighborhood if they want to. Uh, that's just me. And well, and only changes ahead. I see on the, uh, the, the thing you sent over or that was filled out. Right. And, and th that came about, and just as so you guys know and you guys can decide what you want to do with that. Um, obviously we invite the food trucks in. Um, we would prefer the food trucks that I invite in to have some sort of like permit that just says that they're allowed to be there. Um, the whole theory behind that is I don't obviously want, or I don't think of many residents just want seven food trucks parking at every entrance of our village um, at any given time. So we want there to be a process right now. I'm in, you know, I, I hate to say it this way, but right now I'm in control of it. Um, and I think that residents probably like the fact that there's one truck 
periodically. And we don't just have somebody sitting in here seven days a week um, because that would get annoying pretty fast. But uh, in our surroundings, we have started to see that there are food trucks just being parked. Um, and we want to make sure that that's not happening. And that's it. So is the proposed uh, fee schedule in the packet, the new? Yeah, Mark must have it. So it, yeah, it must have, it should be in there. So, and so I guess this is the next point. If there's anything on there that you guys are questioning, um, don't like whatever, I'm not saying, you know, you guys have to vote for it, but if there's any other changes on there that we're missing, let us know if there's something that doesn't look right or legislation doesn't match something. Um, those are just some of the ones that I know we really wanted to take a look at and get them resolved. The, the fee schedule just a few, it's just a first reading for Monday, right? So Correct. we'll have, yeah, yeah, okay. And the whole theory behind this is to get it done. Um, obviously this summer, it some things are busier. So just getting it on the books and getting it ready for the summer. And for those of you having trouble navigating the meeting packet like I was, uh, the thing is instead of one PDF of everything, each thing has its own, so you might have to scroll down and through all the different PDFs to find the stuff. For those that want to wait till Monday, we will get the we will get the actual updated fixed packet out Monday as soon as I get there. The pretty way, and it'll be up on the website. All right, Eric, do you want to go over the last piece only because I oh, and this Jesse is, may yes. even chime in, but yeah, this is just a this is just a first reading for. Council to consider on the authorization of phase two, uh, which is uh, having Garmin Miller move forward, having the contract negotiated and agreed to and signed by the mayor and, and um, in reviewing, they would be then moving forward with the major phase, which is preparing all the building plans uh, and then moving to bidding process. So that is the next phase. And then uh, ultimately, once the bids come back in, council will review and will accept somebody. And that's of course, some months down the road for that. Um, this goes back to after selecting Garmin Miller as the architect through the um, process at the end of last year, I think it was 2020-23 uh, was the, re or 32 was the resolution if anybody wants to refer to that. But at that time, council had, council had uh, accepted Garmin Miller and this was uh, then phase one and then now this is phase two. So that's where we're at. So very simple. And we are we're ready to move forward with that. Everybody, we had a we had a special meeting last Monday. So does anybody have any? Now would be the time to address any additional concerns, right? Well, we were waiting for the way it ended was we were waiting for information. Right. Did you ever get a response to that request, Eric? For uh, the... So, yeah, I did speak with the architect. He's going to prepare a couple things, um, and I should hope to have those on Monday for you. Uh, obviously, all of those things can be considered to continue to be discussed prior to the third reading. So we're oh, okay. The reading process is recommended by legal counsel on this. Okay. Very good. All right, then is that the yeah. end of? Yes, sir, that's all I have. All right, then if that's the end, uh, is there, was, there, was there any other legislation? Since uh, we have meeting packet kerfuffle, was that all the legislation we had to discuss? That's all that's... I have for now. Okay, <laughs> then uh, and uh, Councilperson Brueger, did you have anything else for legislation that you wanted to bring up? Not this time, no. Okay. Uh, then we, uh, I've always thought it was weird we put new business before old business. So I'm, I'm going to talk about old business first, which was the first thing in old business that I wanted uh, to make sure we were on board or on the same page on was, you know, the follow-ups to our discussion from last week's work session, which we got our answers already from Eric. Did anybody else have any other old business that they wanted to Account, um, Mayor Hughes, you're raising your hand or just biting your thumb? No, I'm just thinking, so the, well, it's old, it's new, it's whatever. I just wanted to give you guys a quick update on something. Um, I have been in contact with, and Jesse, you may not even know this yet, so this is an FYI for you. 
Um, as I told you guys, we were already dealing with Huntington um, Bank. Huntington Bank is now in connection with Emmett um, at um, and Jesse. So they are working on financing options and different things like that. Obviously, you know, all we're doing is information at this point. Um, I did reach out to uh, a couple other places. I haven't gotten response back from them except for Fifth Third. Um, Fifth Third was also one of the ones that was um, in the mix for the 2999 building. So I thought that was a great one to reach out to because they already have some of the background information. Honestly, I'm not going to ramble. Once again, um, I told you guys that we were going to have multiple banks in at least getting information from multiple banks. So we're trying to dot our I's, cross our T's and give you guys the best options that we can. So um, Jesse, you may, she, Fifth Third is not really going to have much for me until, oh, you do know because you told me I could sign that. Yeah. Um, so it'll be, she said it would be next week before she got me any information. So she may even be reaching out to you guys after that as well. Okay. So, that's just a, an update for you guys that we're working right now with Huntington and Fifth Third for financing options. Okay. Any anybody have anything else regarding uh, old business? I, I in terms of the facility, um, mm -hmm. the thing that concerns me overall, the overarching concern for me is that the. Um, estimated amount of 1.8 million is already pushing uh, the highest amount we would want to go. And my concern is uh, that I doubt if it's gonna get cheaper um, after the construction drawings and everything is completed. Um, so I don't think that's a good position for council to be in without having I think there should be some what if done. Uh, so <clears throat> what happens if uh, we exceed that? What are our, our plans financially for being able to handle that situation? And or should we be looking to reduce the cost somehow of the building either by reducing the square footage or something else? I don't know, not the expert on on construction, but uh, the financial aspect concerns me. I would say we're heading, into, we're heading into uncharted territory here with regards to the pandemic and how that's affecting construction costs. You know, I can't wait to see what this is going to end up costing. And it's, that's why I'm kind of, you know, I'm not, I'm not a, going to be complaining about my uh, uh or you know voicing my concerns about the size of the project at this point because i got a feeling that this could come back at an ungodly number <laughs> you know it's prevailing wage where you can't find people to work i don't know how you how a guy would bid a project like this in this day and age you know so you're i think you've got some real legitimate concerns there diane because this thing could skyrocket well, you know, and the, the, the good news is that they probably won't start construction until the end of the year or the start of next year. And so most of this year is going to be paper prep, prep document preparations. So, but yeah, it is, it is an un, uncertain market at this time. Um, but if we're intent on uh, proceeding, I, I just, uh, I'm, I'm glad that the mayor is, is working on financing but we, we haven't really, I haven't heard how we're addressing the what if this goes beyond the one point that the, the amount that we're going to be looking for for financing. You know, what is, what is that, um, what is the intent on that? I think we ought to start, start finding out what the public's, you know, appetite for spending a million 1.7, you know, because I it's one it's 1.8, it's 1.79. 1. So it's 1. 1.8. It 1. is 8. yeah. You know, I think we ought to start advertising that we're looking at spending that kind of money and see what the you know, because that was a, a big concern with the 299 building. Is a lot of people don't think we need that much space, which I understand they don't un, they may not understand what's going on, but that doesn't change the fact that people 
may be concerned that we're spending that much money. I know I am. Well, and and here's a couple of little questions. And I, I'm, I'm definitely not going to disagree with anything Tony says. Here's what you're going to have. You are going to have people that do not want you to spend anything. You're going to have people that do not think we need it. Um, I've actually heard it this week. W why do we need that? Um, here's the only thing that I will say. Something's going to have to give as far as the buildings go. Um, regard, and I think everybody can agree with that. I mean, our windows, my, my personal windows busted. And when it free, when it freezes, the whole inside of the window freeze at some point we need to do something because obviously we're paying electric bills and gas bills that are probably through the roof because the building's a train wreck. Something's going to have to give. Um, I understand that it, it's standing and it's usable. That's number two. So I'm, um, I'm not arguing that point. The, the option of having a meeting, a town hall meeting or something is obviously not there unless we hold it outside in the grass. Um, so that's, you know, that's another issue that we have. Um, you post something on Facebook and you're gonna have the typical 20 people love it or hate it and they're gonna argue back and forth 47 times. We already know that as well. Diane, I hear your concern, trust me, because I, I, I don't disagree with you and I know Kim is already concerned about it. Um, at the number that we're at. So you're not wrong, but here's the, the, the only answer that I have for you is making the building smaller. Um, first off, the police department, as Diane did the diagrams is already about the square footage that we're at now. There is no reduction. I mean, you can take out a bathroom. Um, when you start looking at admin, that's about. Mm -hmm. the well, I, you know, I, I'm not, I don't know if we're, if this, I don't know if this meeting is, is a discussion or not. I, I think that I, I, what I'm asking, I guess what I'm asking is, is uh, not to get emotional about it. I think right. it's really financial. And, and if, I guess I'm asking perhaps that Gorman uh, as Garmin, I'm Gorman, Garmin Miller uh, uh, could help us out here um, and, I think whether it's a discussion with the bank or simply a discussion with our fiscal people, Kim in particular, is uh, to realistically look at, um, you know, this is all about risk and, and, uh, and risk mitigation. That's all I'm talking about. And I'm not talking about the police losing a locker room or whatever the hell I, I'm talking about risk mitigation from a financial point of view. That's all I'm talking about here. So if, if we're walking along, uh, we need to be able to answer the question is that the, the what of questions, what are the risks and what can we do and what are we doing to mitigate the risk from a financial point of view? So maybe this is a finance meeting discussion, but, but, there's no way we should la 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 go along here having Garmin doing all this architectural design work. And there may be an opportunity for Garmin to, if they know that we have a, um, a specific number we're trying to hit, if they're going along with these architectural designs, at some point, they're gonna have a hint as to whether they were right or wrong about their 1.8s because that was just an estimate. That was a best guess at the time. So at some point they're gonna go along in this process and they're gonna have a pretty good idea that the numbers are or are not working out right. And I, as you know, as a council member, I wouldn't like, I would not like to pay for this next phase, get all the way to the end in order to have them to present a $2.5 million building and like, oopsie, this is what it ends up with. And then now we have a wonderful, again, wonderful design that we can't afford. So what can Garmin do in terms of this next phase, in terms of how we contract with them to in this next phase to what put a stop, put a, a stop in the middle of at some point in the process, if they find that that this thing's not working out, can they stop? Are we obligated contractually for them to finish the process, even though the number is going to come out to be totally undoable? Those are the kinds of things that that I think needs to be discussed. I hear, it. I hear exactly what you're saying, but here's, until the bid comes in, you don't know. And unfortunately we've been yeah. down this road before. East Shore Court is a perfect example of until the bids come in, they can only, Mike Flickinger had no 
and he does this for a living. Yeah, but so, we're not talking about East Shore Court. We're not talking about. Talking we're talking about. about we're talking about. Th this is is going to be more than okay. The, you're not going to get. You have to get a bid. You're, yeah. you're not going to get a bid, and so like for example, you know, and maybe Tony, uh, and maybe uh, Tony is going to think I'm wrong, but you know, if, if I were calling three places to have my floors done. I can say it shouldn't be more than $5,000. I've had it done 10 times in my life. A floor should be $5,000. I call Tony, I call Mark, and I call Brian, and I get $3,000 bids. You're not calling them, and they're not, you're not saying, they're not saying to you, give me $50,000, and I, I'll give you a bid. That's, right, this is what I'm talking about. We're, we're asking the, them to do this next section. We're paying for this, right? Yes, absolutely. You're, you're you paying are paying for, for their it. designs. You have but, to. And, yeah, but you're, it, you can't. Garmin can't control Tony's estimate. Tony can't control Brian's estimate. So when it actually goes to the public market, you don't know what the bids are going to come in. And that's all I was saying about East Shore Court. We sent out the, you know, when we got the bids, we were dumbfounded at, at the prices that the bids came back because they can only, they only have the knowledge that they have. And Tony, I mean, and I'm going to agree with, with Tony on this. We are in uncharted territory when it comes to lumber prices. I don't know how many memes you guys have seen of the car going down the street and basically calling that guy a millionaire because he's got some wood in the back. Um, and that's the truth right now. I mean, I just did my fence and it was triple what the first, you get it. Wood is so expensive right now. So I don't think, here's what I'm gonna tell you. I don't think if, he, if Garmin had a crystal ball to know what wood prices are gonna do six months from now when these bids come in, they would be well, they would be better well. So I hear you, Diane, but I, there's nobody that's going to be able to tell us until the bids come in one point. And as, as an FYI, um, and Eric did point out, the 1.8 is with the contingency. So the actual building itself is 1.56. Not that that's anything that great. There is contingencies already in that. So it is not actually 1.8 um, on the high end. It's 1.5 with the extras. So right. that's an FYI. So, Does so if I could jump know. in, please. If I could oh. jump in, I'm sorry. So a couple quick things, all right, in these processes, in order to get, you, you, you kind of talk a little chicken before the egg, okay? You will have your discussions with finance, Emmett, and your contingencies all on the side, but you truly don't know anything, especially in this current market, until we get a bid in. So we have to spend the money and you have to get a real bid. You can have the architect rolling dice all day long, making up little numbers, you know, and he's basing it, by the way, all the architects base this on a square foot rate based on other bids they are getting in for other jobs. That's how they're keeping it fairly consistent from week to week and month to month. All right. But things change. So if the bids come in at a weird place, okay, your work's not lost. You'll either, you can rebid it, which is common, by the way, just so everyone's aware on the regular projects in the larger municipalities. Sometimes you go through a couple bids in order to get it to where you want, or you or you hold it, right, for six months, you know, and you rebid it again. And that's just the way it is. Your money's not wasted on spending on Garmin to get this done because it's always going to be ready for a bid with some minor updates before the next bidding process. So just keep that in mind, please. Guys, do we know? I I personally haven't heard, but I wonder if anyone else has if there is going to be any state or federal action with regards to lumber. I know they're talking about reversing some of the 2017 steel tariffs. I wondered if anyone had heard anything about wood or you know, lumber being something looked into as well. Just, just a thought. I, I know I haven't heard any. I wonder worry if about the commodities happen. prices. We can't control them. Oh, exactly. we can just go to bid just, and see where they come out at. I, I know. I know we can't. I know Minerva Park cannot effectively lobby on on international tariffs. I, I just wondered if anyone had heard anything that might be giving hope. Well, and to Eric's point, of course, this next approving phase two does not approve $1.8 million. It approves however much, 50, 70, what, right. however many tens of thousands Garmin Miller is going to charge us to get all this ready for bid, which, as Eric just said, just needs to be done. Um, I'm actually sort of on the other side of the issue where I'm saying, you know what, I think our financial outlook's a lot rosier than we think it is. And yeah, if it gets to 1.8 or 2 million, I think we'll be able to service that debt and have a nice building that'll last 50 years. And some people will complain and grouse, 
but some people mm -hmm. will complain and grouse about a free lunch. So I just kind of ignore them and move on. And if they want to unseat me or run for council and put a stop to it come this November, good for them. I love participating. You still got two more years. What you... <laughs> well, okay, but four yeah, we're people, the ones up. There's, there's there's four people up, and that'd be enough to 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 kibosh oh. anything <laughs> anyone wanted to do. Yeah, but we are the ones who are up for it. <laughs> Can I just ask something really bad? Don't yell at me for what I'm about to do. I'm totally interrupting your meeting, David. Yes, ma'am. When is late cleanup? Um, we have June twelfth and thirteenth, or. 1819 the second or third saturday sunday in june depending on rain dates okay so the 12th is a firm the 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 12th the saturday and the 13th sunday are the two yes. firm dates okay that's it yeah and the the next week will be the rain dates perfect <laughs> that was all i had sorry i'm setting up the dumpster yeah 19 and 20 yeah not the 1819. All right, with that derailing, was that, I, I, I guess I was kind of lost on, we were talking about a lot of stuff, but I don't know that all that stuff we were just talking about led to any point of action or, uh, you know, a thing we need to accomplish other than, you know, we had a delightful conversation. I, I think the legislation is going to be in front of everybody and they just need to make the decision if they <clears> want to and in, invest in the money knowing that, you know, I, and we don't know. I mean, that's the whole right. process and that's where we are. So the legislation's there and we'll see, you know, I, I, I see what Diane's saying if we do this, if we yeah. do this, but right now we don't know if we need to. Right, and I, yeah, I, I, I get it. It's there's a concern. Uh, okay, then was there any other old business uh, to talk about at this time? All right, I know I had skipped over new business because for some reason I prefer new business last, uh, and I have a small piece of new business, uh, and that is uh, the mulch at the playground. Uh, it has not been refreshed in a couple of years and it is looking like it is in need. And that needs to be, uh, so we need to put a few hundred bucks. I don't know how much it is, but it's been a couple of years. In fact, yeah, go ahead. Is it regular mulch? No, you got to get the playground stuff because the regular mulch is gross and dirty and the, <clears throat> the playground stuff is not gross and dirty. I mean, unless you, unless we want to field complaints of people saying the mulch is gross and dirty. Yeah, no, it's well, it's the last mulch playground mulch. I think so. I, I don't. I I would assume, but I I don't have a great recollection of the last mulching. Well, I, the reason I bring that up is I thought our the guys that did the landscaping, you know, improvements at the entrances are the ones that did that. And I don't. I don't but, think it's been mulched in a couple of years. It's okay. it. It may not have been mulched. It is, it is, I, my recollection is imperfect, but in my brain, I don't think there's been new mulch put in the pit where the playground structure is since that playground structure went up. But I could be wrong about that. Um, I know MPCA used to pay for that mulch and I, they stopped doing that three or four years ago. And I don't know that it's happened since then. Well, I think we can handle that. I just, yes. the only thing I'm going to do is make sure that, you know, whether or not we can use parkland fund money um, or whether or not we have something somewhere, but I'm assuming that I won't need to come to you guys to figure it out. So we'll do it. Well, and I, I got a correction with someone from someone uh, here who's has better record keeping than I. And uh, the last time it was done was three years ago with the dirty mulch. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, and it was done by uh, by the former village maintenance person. Okay. Well, we won't use the nasty mulch. Is if you guys are okay with that, spending a Please little. Thank you. Time. Yes, I would prefer to do that as well. Yep. I've, I've got to head off, guys. Me, but... I work again tonight. Bye. Bye. Bye.
Tony, you were saying something and got cut off. I just said I haven't seen the playground while it's at Speedway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's not at Speedway. You gotta gotta go to like Kurtz Brothers or something. But it's you know, any other new business? Going once, going twice. All right. Anybody else have any other walk on agenda items? This is it. Speak now or forever hold your peace. All right, then, my friends, I believe uh, we are ready, Diane, just uh, to just to remind you, both myself and Mayor Hughes will not be in attendance on Monday. So we are looking to you to run the show. Um, and we thank you for that. And with that, I uh, move we adjourn this uh, work session. Good weekend. Everybody, Happy Mother's Day. Day. Everyone is a mother. Bye.